Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre. Who was he? Uh, he was a Frenchman. Um, his father was murdered under the Nazis, died under the Nazis. He became a priest. Eventually, he became the superior of the Holy Ghost Fathers, which is a missionary order. He was, Archbishop Lefebvre, a hero, a missionary man. And I once was blessed to have lunch with someone very close to Archbishop Lefebvre. I won't say his name because I don't want to cause controversy. He's still alive. And he said the thing about Archbishop Lefebvre was he was a man of action. He was a man of missions, missionary activity. He was not a man of canon law. I think we need to understand that, that, you know, even canon law itself says that the salvation of souls is the highest law. A lot of people, especially since 1988, want to pile on and talk about all the things, and not even all the things, it's really one thing, that Archbishop Lefebvre did wrong. Of course, in 1988, he consecrated four bishops against the express, explicit will of then John Paul II and who was assisting in the whole dialogue, then Cardinal Ratzinger, who then came on to be Bennett XVI, and then later lifted the excommunications. Archbishop Lefebvre in 1970 founded with canonical and ecclesiastical bishop and papal approval the Society of St. Pius X to preserve tradition, to preserve the sacraments, celebrated all seven sacraments in the old way. Yes, there were priests saying the old ways, but he was the one who moved forward, even though he's a missionary, with the canonical mechanism to preserve it. In other words, he checked all the canonical boxes in 1970 and moved along and tried to work with Paul VI up until 1975, 1976. I don't want to give you a full biography of Lefebvre, but he journeyed, he accompanied Paul VI as far as, far as he could go. And then everything starts to break down and gets really messy. 1975, 1976. In 1983, you have a new code of canon law. You have the Assisi meetings where you have Buddhas by the Dalai Lama on an altar, tabernacle of a Catholic church. Yes, with permission of John Paul II. All these things happening, and he's getting to be an old man. He realizes you got to have priests. You need more bishops. He makes a decision in 1988, and we can debate it all we want, whether it was legit, whether it was illegit, supplied jurisdiction. Should he have? Should he have waited? Should he have just died and let it all go? Again, remember, there was no Institute of Christ the King. There was no Fraternity of St. Peter yet. Those all came as reactions or as solutions to a problem that was pushed forward on the back of Archbishop Lefebvre. And in a way, I think Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre looked forward and saw that traditional Catholics who were trying to preserve the theology and the liturgy of the Catholic Church knew that they weren't going to be treated canonically or fairly. Whether you are for or against the SSPX, I think you have to admit that Archbishop Lefebvre is a giant in Catholic history in the 1900s. Archbishop uh, Viganot says that there were many prelates at the time that knew that Vatican II was a revolution, but they didn't know how to counter it openly. And then he says, this is the key to Lefebvre. I think Viganot has this right. He says, today we understand the historical merit of Archbishop Lefebvre in having rebelled against the line dictated by the conciliar Politburo, 